This video is about how to sharpen traditional Japanese single bevel knives. It's not rocket science, but if you're having trouble understanding the basic sharpening terms or have simple questions like how long to soak the water stones before sharpening and what on earth am I doing to my thumbnail, then please check our basic sharpening video before starting this one. I can call it advanced, since I'm far from being an expert, but I will call it intermediate, because I go into many details and some complexity for all you knowledge-thirsty sharpeners out there. Japanese traditional single bevel knives are deeply connected with traditional Japanese cutting techniques and Japanese cuisine. Sharpening and polishing these knives also has strong roots in Japanese sword care, where a key role is played by traditional Japanese natural sharpening stones. It is art and technique over art and technique, infinitely compounded, so despite being passionate for it, the more I discover, the more I realize what more there is to discover. This video, even with the detailed sharpening instruction, is only an introduction for all of you out there to start discovering. Knowledge is like shit. If you spread it around wisely, it's fertilizer. I will also be using several Japanese terms when describing parts of the knives. These terms have roots in correct traditional Japanese words, but are simplified for easier understanding. What is a traditional single bevel knife? Traditional Japanese single bevel knives are knives with a bevel on the front, shinogi side, and a concave back, uraoshi side. The three most important knife types are deba, yanagiba, and Usuba. All three knives have the same single bevel geometry, but can be sharpened slightly differently according to use. Lefty, righty. Single bevel geometry is asymmetrical and cannot be changed due to the blade's construction. When you are holding the knife in your hand, blade pointing away, edge down, if the shinogi line and bevel is on the right side, the knife is for right hand use. If the shinogi line is on the left, the knife is for left hand use only. This cannot be changed, so be careful when purchasing a new knife, especially if you are a left hand user, since left hand single bevel knives are far rarer and nearly always a bit more expensive. Uraoshi side or back side. Uraoshi refers to the flat rim edge perimeter on the back side of traditional Japanese knives. The uraoshi surrounds the urasuki the integral concave shape on the back side of traditional Japanese knives. The purpose of the urasuki is to minimize foot sticking to the blade, reducing the drag while slicing, and also helps us with sharpening. It's essential for the rim of the urasuki to be perfectly flat and level in order to have its full effect. Furthermore, this perimeter is essential because it enhances the strength of the blade on the edge of the knife, as well as aligns the unbalanced parts on the back side of the blade. Without the uraoshi, the knife cannot be correctly sharpened to reach its full potential and will be brittle. The urasuki is made on the big Japanese sharpening wheels and cannot be sharpened or ground at home. We can sharpen only the flat uraoshi perimeter. Before starting to sharpen, please examine your uraoshi and urasuki. There are many single bevel looking knives out there with no urasuki concave area on the back side and despite looking very traditional and single bevel, they are not traditional single bevel knives and cannot be sharpened as single bevel knives. Shinogi side or front side. The shinogi line is a line or ridge between the upper flat blank area of the knife and bevel. It's only on front side of the knife. Take a flat edge and examine the bevel. We will discuss the bevel's geometry later, but here we are interested in the micro bevel, the tiny, thin ending edge. If there is no micro bevel or just a very small micro bevel, it's okay. If you have very wide micro bevel, more than 2 mm, plus you do not observe a concave urasuki, then, again, despite looking single bevel, it most likely it's not. If you have a good urasuki concave area and a wide micro bevel, then your knife was not sharpened properly in the past and you're facing a bit more work to reach its full potential. Steel type, Kasumi, Honiyaki. Good steel in combination with an experienced blacksmith and experienced grinding means easier sharpening and stronger edge. When buying new single bevel knives, the traditional steels like Aogami, Shirogami and Jinsanko are definitely more recommended. For blade construction, we have two options. 
Kuniaki is a term for a blade made from one single piece of steel material. Kuniaki knives are the highest end of Japanese knife culture. They are very expensive and more rare. In my opinion, they can also be a bit harder to sharpen and are more brittle. Kasumi blades, which are more common, are made from a blacksmith combining two or more different steels. The harder steel, Hagane, for the cutting plane, and Jigane, a softer covering or surrounding steel. Advantages Cutting techniques The asymmetrical blade design helps us with many special sushi-specific cutting techniques, like Health angle The cutting edge angle is flat on the Uraoshi side, 0 degrees, and on the front Shinogi side, it's around plus minus 15 degrees, so the total angle is plus minus 15 degrees. Because of that, single bevel knives can also be thicker at the spine and still extremely sharp due to their very low sharpening angle. Grinding, thinning and sharpening are part of the same process. When we are sharpening a single bevel knife, we are removing steel material toward the shinogi line. The rule is to raise the shinogi line by the same amount as the damage you must remove from the edge. If this is done correctly, it means that even after countless sharpening sessions, your blade geometry will stay exactly the same and its performance will not change as with double bevel knives. Disadvantages When you first start using Japanese traditional single bevel knives, your cutting technique should be adapted because slicing with this kind of blade profile has the tendency to get drawn from the middle inward, away from the shinogi side. How the knife was made and the maker's attention to detail is sometimes not so obvious on the first look, but when you begin sharpening a traditional single bevel knife, you can encounter huge differences between a good knife and a not so good one. Good traditional steel is important, but only the most experienced blacksmiths can achieve its full potential with forging and correct heat treatment. Grinding these knives is an art in itself. Often it's done by a separate grinding master and mostly determines how this knife will respond to sharpening in the future, especially in the first few sharpening processes. Given the importance of this step, some of these knives are not completely finished when new because experienced sushi chefs like to set the final edge by themselves. Buying knives from experienced blacksmiths or trusty retailers and examining the knife before purchasing it is the key. Water stones for sharpening single bevel knives If you are buying a knife from an experienced knife dealer, ask for advice about water stones. There's no general rule of what type of stones to use, especially when discussing a kazumi finish. Kazumi means mist, referring to the hazy appearance of the soft steel of the blade in contrast to the glossy carbon steel cutting edge, and by testing different stones with the same grit, the results may vary. My basic advice for a sharpening setup is this. First, a good stone flattener is a must, because the sharpening stones have to be flat. You will also need a good rubber stand, nagura or dressing stone. It's not so common, but I also use a leather strop. Grits. Basically, you will need two to three stones. With Usuba and Yanagiba knives, you can maybe use only medium and fine, but with Deba, since it's the most abused knife, you will also probably need a coarse one. Sometimes you can use a diamond flattening plate of, for example, 400 grit as a flattening stone. But in cases of greater damage on the blade, you can also use it as the initial coarse grit stone. For higher grits, above 5000, we can start using Japanese natural stones. You can also use artificial stones, but if we're talking about a nice kazumi finish, or especially if we are sharpening honiyaki knives, natural stones are essential to bring out the beauty of hamon and other steel and forging characteristics. Let's sharpen. Uraoshi process. Backside. Start. Before starting any kind of sharpening activities on traditional Japanese knives, we have to protect the handle. Japanese wa handles, the importantly natural Mongolia wood in particular, can get dirty very easily. I advise you to start the sharpening on the back side. There's a good reason to do so. We usually sharpen dull knives. Dull means your edge went through some abuse and it's damaged. Usually it's not straight and has some microchips, dents and mostly micro rollovers. 
The character of these micro-injuries has to do with the single bevel geometry on the blade being slightly different and the tendency is for this damage to appear more on the backside than on the front. By starting with the back, we minimize the amount of steel we will need to remove because we can slightly push back some of the dents and rollovers. Despite starting on the Uraoshi side, we never want to oversharpen this side because the Urasuki, the integral concave, has to stay concave as long as possible over the knife's countless sharpening sessions. Remember that to thin the Uraoshi on new knives especially means creating a very delicate, thin, brittle edge. Very thick Uraoshi and disappearing Urasaki concave middle means that the knife needs new Urasaki sharpening, which is usually done only by an experienced sharpening master on a big sharpening wheel and it's not possible to do by ourselves on flat water stones. So be careful to not over sharpen Uraoshi. I would advise this first Uraoshi sharpening to start on 1000 to 1500 grit and the stone has to be totally flat. Place the fingers as close to the edge as possible and lightly press when pulling the blade towards you. The downforce has to be where the damage is and pulling and pressing towards you will help to unroll the edge and damage, scratches to the stone will be less when pulling. However, this sharpening phase is extremely short, every extra stroke is unnecessary. Remember, we want to preserve the Urasuki concave area. As soon as you feel the rolled over edge is not biting into stone anymore, it's enough. Usually this means just a few strokes. Placement of the blade on the stone is also very important, and I would advise holding the knife parallel all the way from the heel to the tip. By doing this, we make sure the Urasuki is correctly aligned through the entire length of the blade, and that means better cutting performance. If this is your first sharpening session on a new single bevel knife that has never been sharpened before, you can also examine the Uraoshi flat rim to see if there are any spots that are not aligned in the same plane with other parts of the Uraoshi. You can use a magic marker to reveal these spots, and in this case continue sharpening until everything is flat. Shinogi process – front side, main business The Shinogi sharpening process is for sharpening the entire steel section between the Shinogi ridge and edge. When you are sharpening a new knife, be sure to check for high and low spots. They will be easily detected when you start sharpening and take the extra effort to remove them because that will be your best foundation for much better sharpness and easier, faster sharpening in the future. We have two types of traditional edge that we can achieve with different sharpening techniques. Hamaguri edge. A Hamaguri profile gives a slightly convex edge, also called a clamshell edge, that is integrated from two or three different bevels, the soft iron bevel, hard steel bevel and optional micro bevel. It's harder and more complex to sharpen, better for some traditional Japanese cutting techniques, is stronger with a less brittle edge and it also lessens foot sticking. Bita Togi Edge or Flat Edge This creates a flat edge from the Shinogi line to the edge of the optional micro bevel. It's easier to sharpen and has a thinner edge, making it sharper but more brittle. Examine your original edge before starting to sharpen to determine what style of sharpening is best for your knife. You can also change from Flat Edge to Hamaguri Edge if you want to change its characteristic. Finger Positions we will use three finger positions with pressure on the other side of these key lines. Shinogi Ridge, the transition line between hard steel and soft steel. The main differences between how to sharpen a Hamaguri edge and Beta Togi edge are mainly in finger position. For sharpening a Hamaguri edge, all three positions are necessary. A Beta Togi edge requires only one position. I will show how to sharpen a Hamaguri edge. For a flat Beta Togi edge, everything is the same, but use only the middle position of the fingers. Soft steel. Jigane sharpening. First, we will sharpen the soft steel. We want to raise the shinogi line a touch, exactly as much as we will have to raise the edge later. If we have 1 mm chips on the edge to remove, we will need to raise the shinogi line by 1 mm. Place your fingers in position 1, just a little bit below where the shinogi line corresponds to the uraoshi backside and start sharpening. For heavily abused deba, use a 220 to 400 grit stone for unsharpening. For the anagiba and usuba, use 1000 grit. Or, if you are a regular sharpener and you are sharpened often, you can also start with 3000 grit. Apply pressure with your best two or three fingers away from you and gently pull back. 
The two or three fingers have to be close together and remain in line with the middle of the stone. This is important for all sharpening done on the shinogi side. For the uraoshi backside, it's not so important. The process for traditional single bevel knives is especially important with more blade curve, like deba knives. Stick to this advice and you will have better sharpness. Let me explain here. All blades have some curve with the edge and shinogi line following an arc. So if the fingers are apart, your sharpening point is between the fingers. That is not ideal because it can create some slight deformations on the edge. Ideally, you want to sharpen steel directly under the pressure point. When doing the first sharpening on 1000 grit, do not let the stone produce too much slurry, because too much can produce scratches beyond the shinogi line. Start sharpening and go along entire length of the blade. The 1000 grit blurry finish will show you where you still have to sharpen and where is okay, so continue to even out the high and low spots, as I mentioned before. The tip and the bottom of the blade are normally more challenging. Tip. As the blade curves toward the tip, lead the handle a bit and rotate the blade away from you to follow and reach fully up to the shinogi line. Bottom. Use your thumb to apply a little more pressure and push the end of the handle slightly down. Hard steel Hagane sharpening. Now we will sharpen the steel that holds our edge at a slightly steeper angle. Apply pressure with two fingers close together, in position 3 as close to the edge as possible. If your knife had a strong Hamaguri edge before, that's enough. If you had a flat edge before and now you want a Hamaguri edge, in addition to the low finger position, you will also have to rise the blade from Shinogi reach about 1 to 2 mm. Again, apply pressure away from you and gently come back. Continue this motion until you remove all the chips and nicks and create a burr. Uraoshi process. Using a 3000 grit stone, flatten the stone. Place the knife parallel with the stone and very lightly with your fingers press towards you, some on position 2 and the transition between the hard steel and the soft steel. When sharpening the uraoshi side, because it's flat, we can slightly spread our fingers. Just a few light strokes up and down to reduce the burr and flip it over. Check for the burr with your thumbnail. Shinogi process. Using 3000 grit stone, we do it all over again, exactly like in the previous step, but with slightly lighter pressure. Uraoshi process. Prepare the 5000 grit stone, flatten it and place the knife parallel with the stone. Again, with very light fingers, draw the blade towards you on position 2 at the transition between the hard steel and soft steel. During the next sharpening processes, Observe how the flat uraoshi rim slowly gets wider. If the backspine uraoshi rim gets too wide, shift finger position closer to the edge. If the front edge uraoshi rim gets too wide, shift finger position closer to the spine. We can check this with two long flat surfaces. The uraoshi rim must be parallel to the flat surface about the shinogi line. Shinogi process. Using 5000 grit stone. Take Nagura or the dressing stone and create some slurry on the stone surface. Find your finger position number 2 between hard steel and soft steel and start sharpening. You can take some more time here as you want to have a lot of slurry on the stone. Here you will connect both bevels into a single slightly convex bevel and you will create a Kazumi type finish. When you are happy with the finish, clean the stone, flatten the stone and you are ready for the final step. From this point on, we have a sharp knife. We can finish the sharpening process with the optional addition of the micro bevel and removing the burr. We can also continue sharpening on finer grit stones or natural stones. My personal opinion is that all stainless knives are in this stage at more or less 95% of the sharpness of carbon steel knives, especially Shirogami, where after hardening the steel develops as extremely homogeneous with fine small particles inside the steel and we can achieve further sharpness on finer stones of 8000 to 10000 grit, but basically everything over 8000, such as 10000 grit, is more about the looks than sharpness. If we have a nice Honiaki knife, prepared at the highest level, it's considered to be a traditional Japanese polish, 
following the same techniques as Japanese sword, we can use many different Japanese natural water stones with grids up to 30,000 as well as finger stones. We can then finish with a final step called nugui, where we take powered iron oxide, mix with clove oil and rub it with cotton in the jigane and hamon area. This procedure makes a jigane dark and the hamon line shiny white. Examine the edge. Before starting with the micro bevel, we can do a few light strokes on the uraoshi side, continuously drawn from the bottom to the tip, and a few light strokes on the shinogi side, in the low finger position, also continuously from the bottom to the tip. In this process, we can flip between the uraoshi and shinogi side two or three times. Now, are we going to add a micro bevel or not? We must examine our edge, press into the edge from the side with a fingernail to check for steel deformations. Just a little around 1 to 2 mm is ok for the Anagiba and Usuba knives. But for the big Deba, it's better to have no deformations, otherwise you will damage it very fast. You can fine-tune this on the micro bevel. Micro bevel. I always do a very small micro bevel on Yanagiba and Usuba knives and a little bigger one on Deba knives. During your cutting sessions in between sharpening, you can also see how your edge holds and if it's too brittle, you can add a micro bevel. Some sharpeners also use a micro bevel as a shortcut for faster sharpening if they don't have time. This will work a few times, but it's not good in the long term. For creating a micro bevel, clean and flatten your finest stone. Then start lightly at the shinogi line and leave the angle about 2 to 3 mm in the shinogi line of the knife. Use finger position number 3 as close to the edge as possible. A few gentle strokes from the bottom to the tip should do it. Turn the knife to uraoshi side and take a few gentle strokes from tip to bottom. Hunting or removing the burr. So at this point, we have a perfectly sharp knife. To examine its state, we can do a fingernail test. It should have nice, smooth, but very fine, catchy feeling. This catch is good, but it means there is still a micro burr. We have different options what to do with it. Leave it or simply remove it on your jeans. This method works the best on simpler pure steels like Shirogami, where the burr will fly off easily. However, we can expect some micro burr leftovers, which actually help us when cutting vegetables with skin, for example. Remove it with stones. The best way, but it requires a very experienced sharpener. You will also need a super fine grit stone, or at least 8000, depending on the steel. In this case, just continue lightly sharpening the front side, back side, and constantly checking for the burr. The correct grit stone is when you no longer feel the burr. Remove it with a leather strop. In my opinion, this is the best method. It will produce a very fine edge, especially good for slicing fish and meat. It doesn't require a special technique. Just following my advice when drawing the blade back across the strop, alternating three or four times. At this point, we have a sharp knife. Regular sharpening will produce better sharpness and will shorten the sharpening process. Enjoy cutting and slicing. Don't forget to watch your fingers.